The engineers must find a way to protect the Burj Al Arab. The simplest solution is to change the aerodynamic shape, but that upsets the architect. The architectural idea of the exoskeleton structure is, when you look at it, that the very essence of the building. If you take it off, it's just another building. If you put the exoskeleton structure on, you know, you have an icon. The engineers need to think again. Well, they're the, this is classic water shedding. We realized we had to come up with something clever that uh, was not visible, but somehow reduced the motion. They turn to an ingenious hanging weight called a tuned mass damper. These are installed at vulnerable points in the exoskeleton. When the wind blows and vortex shedding starts to create dangerous vibrations, the five-ton weight will swing instead of the structure and damp down the vibrations to well within safety limits. Eleven of these systems are fitted from the top of the 60-meter mast all the way down through each of the steel bow structures. These dampers safely cancel out the thread. June 1997. Dubai is reinventing itself as the luxury tourist destination. This old hotel bites the dust as the Burj Al Arab, the symbol of the new Dubai, approaches its final form. Just 30 months before the deadline, the crew begins constructing the toughest engineering challenge. Sheikh Mohammed wants the building to amaze. So the design calls for a restaurant that looks as if it's suspended in the sky. I like the idea of the visitor sitting out in space, looking across the view towards the, the Arabian Gulf and Dubai, and sort of almost floating up in the clouds. The whole idea of hanging out over space would, would give you a dining experience um, pretty unparalleled. The Al Muntaha, or ultimate sky view restaurant, will soar 200 meters above the sea and project nearly 27 meters out on both sides from the building's narrow central core. Once again, Wright's throwing down a gauntlet to structural engineer Anthony McCarter. Can he secure this eccentric wing-like structure with no visible means of support? When Tom first showed it to me, I must admit, I thought he was crazy. It, this room is actually the size of most buildings, and Tom decided that he wanted to take it and stick it outside of the centre of gravity of the supporting structure. So there it was, dangling in the breeze with only the structural engineer to hold it up. And if the engineers get the calculations wrong, the whole thing could tumble 200 metres to Earth. McCarter finds a solution to the pull of gravity that pushes conventional engineering to new heights. In the concrete core at the back of the building, he casts a series of steel brackets known as embedments. Ten enormous steel girders radiate off them up to 1.6 meters high. These beams form the base of the rigid steel floor. The wing-like exterior can be attached to it, and then the entire restaurant is enclosed in aluminium and glass. This gravity-defying structure will survive winds of close to 160 kilometers an hour. It's an engineering triumph. But they are just four years into the six-year program. No one can afford to take their foot off the gas. The program was relentless and challenging. 24-hour working, 6 o'clock, site meetings in the morning, every morning. You live, sleep, breathe the building. The challenge really was on, can we design it and finish it by the original program? The Burj Al Arab is due to open in time to celebrate the millennium, just two years away. The world's media are watching to see if the hotel will be the masterpiece the Sheikh promises, and if the team can complete it on schedule. The only way to deliver on time is to start the interior decoration 
long before the exterior is finished. In a temperate climate, this wouldn't be an issue, but humidity in Dubai reaches 100%, and temperatures can soar to a scorching 49 degrees. These conditions simply won't allow the team to fit delicate finishes like gold leaf, silk, and carved wood. If we'd started to put materials that were susceptible to moisture, at that time, they would have just fallen apart. To make the deadline, the contractors need to air condition this giant building site and bring the temperature down dramatically. The first step is to enclose the building by installing the final wall, Wright's iconic white sail. But it's going to be tough. When we first proposed the idea of the fabric sail wall, there was a lot of skepticism. People thought that it couldn't be done. They stretch woven glass fiber sections between huge horizontal beams. The surface is pre-coated with Teflon to resist dirt and sand. The result notches up another first for the Burj, the largest fabric wall anywhere in the world. The reflective properties of the white sail will help keep the temperature down. But the contractors still need to find a way for trucks to enter the building without allowing in the desert heat. The solution is to install a huge airlock. Trucks drive in, the vehicle pauses as the doors close behind it. A second set of doors then open, and the vehicle moves out of the building. The airlock and the sail wall now seal off the building. But cooling a space this large during construction could create a major setback. This unique structure now boasts the world's largest atrium, soaring to an amazing 180 meters. All this warm air can hold far more water vapor than cold air. If they cool this hot, humid environment too quickly, they will create uncontrollable condensation we could have had a rain cloud form at the top of the atrium and create massive damage to the interior design. The only way to avoid rain clouds will cost valuable time. The contractors switch on the giant cooling system and bring the interior temperature down steadily by less than one degree a day. Given the schedule, it's painfully slow. We started to cool the building down in June 1998. By December 98, it was pretty well down to temperature. At last, the interior decoration can begin. But the hunt for a designer who can create interiors worthy of a shake causes further delays. Quan Chu, who's already worked for the Sultan of Brunei, knows exactly what it takes to satisfy royalty. It's great news when she agrees to take on the most luxurious hotel on the planet with its daunting 202 palatial suites and the 180-meter atrium. But she has just 24 months from design to completion to be ready for the guests booked in for the millennium. I had a very, very tight program. So what, what we did was that the entire office, or 50 designers, just dropped everything else. And solidly, we just worked on the Burj Al Arab. She not only faces a frantic schedule, Sheikh Mohammed is expecting her to amaze the world. The brief basically asked us to design something that's never been ever designed before and that um, will never be designed ever again. Quan Chu and her team pull out all the stops and begin to produce interiors they hope will match the Sheikh's ambition. But as they struggle to meet the deadline, another more severe problem comes up. The Sheikh wants to offer guests every conceivable electronic gadget in their suite. This new requirement could have dangerous consequences. A new member of the team is suddenly in the hot seat. Electrical engineer Rob Roos faces the biggest challenge of his career. There was a, a total redesign or a total change in the interior design and uh, that imposed overnight almost a 50% increase in the electrical load of the building. 
The Sheikh's new plans mean each suite requires an enormous 14 kilowatts. That's eight times the load of a normal European house for every suite. With 202 suites, that's roughly enough electricity for a town of over 6,000 people. The hotel will have electric curtains throughout, 52,000 lights, most of them on dimmers, and over 5,000 kilometers of electric cable. All these electronics can scramble the waveform of the electric current and create a problem known as harmonic distortion. This can melt the sheathing around live cables and cause a raging fire. That was a situation which was just totally unacceptable. We had to deal with that. The people of Las Vegas know just how lethal a hotel fire can be. November 1980. In the city's MGM Grand Hotel, a pair of electrical wires short circuit. This causes a blaze that wreaks destruction. 85 people perish in this real-life towering inferno, and over 700 are injured. It's one of the worst hotel fires in history, all caused by a simple electrical fault. Roos needs a solution to the fire risk, and fast. Obviously, the, the hotel was under construction. There were some fairly heavy deadlines to try and get the, uh, the hotel finished and opened, and this was a major change. His response takes electrical engineering to a new level. He devises a harmonic filter system. First, it detects the electronic distortion, then it sends a current that's the mirror image to cancel it. It's called antiphase and works like noise-canceling headphones. He installs his filters on key floors and at the point the electricity enters the building. No one has ever attempted a system on this scale before. This was the largest active filter installation of its kind in a building like this anywhere in the world. A world-class solution for a world-class megastructure. The team constructing the Burj Al Arab can claim a string of groundbreaking achievements. They build the first artificial island off the coast of Dubai, construct the tallest atrium in the world, enclosed by the largest fabric wall ever built. And with the mast finally in place, this structure, for now at least, is taller than any other hotel on the planet. Now, five years into the project, the team reaches an important milestone. The iconic exterior is almost complete, but the interior decoration of the world's most luxurious hotel is seriously behind schedule. This stage has always been a race against time. Now, Sheikh Mohammed is about to send the design team into a tailspin. Dubai, April 1999. The world's tallest and most opulent hotel is approaching completion. Everyone is rushing to finish the hotel, ready for the millennium deadline. Interior designer Quan Chu is still operating in overdrive. Christmas was cancelled. Um... Easter was cancelled, um, bank holidays were cancelled. We basically made 50, 60 hour weeks. Her brief from the Sheikh is to shock, to innovate, to amaze the guests with a modern Arab palace. And she delivers in spades with over 24,000 square meters of marble from Italy and Brazil, the equivalent of nearly three soccer pitches. Over 8,000 square meters of 22 karat gold leaf give the desired impression of luxury. And she completes the appearance of total indulgence with crystal chandeliers, woven silver, and velvet. But for the world's largest atrium, Quan Chu makes a radical decision. She goes minimalist. She lets the complex architecture speak for itself by painting it all white. The interior decoration is almost back on schedule. Mm. 
Then comes the moment of truth. Sheikh Mohammed arrives to examine her work.